Hello and welcome to this lecture, where I will show you how to implement login functionality based on the users within our database. I have prepared the login form, input filter, root and view script. This is all something that we have seen in a previous lecture, so I'm going to briefly walk through the code. So first I'll open up the login form, and as you can see I've just added three elements here. One for the email, password, and the submit button. So nothing new here. Next I'll show you the input filter. And I've just set both inputs to required. Added a string trim filter chain and an email validation chain. Next let's take a look at the routes that I've added for the login page. This is just a literal route pointing to the login action within the index controller. And the view script is very simple, just like you've seen before. So I'm just outputting or rendering these two elements. So now let's begin to implement our login functionality. I'll begin by adding a method within our user repository. And it's going to be a method that returns an authentication adapter. And an authentication adapter is an adapter that performs the login logic. So later I'll implement an authentication service, which then uses an adapter to perform the authentication. So because in this case we're going to log in by looking up in the database, our authentication adapter is going to be concerned with the database, so that's why I'm adding it to the user repository. So let's just document this. We'll be able to type send authentication adapter. Oops, missing an either. Adapter DB table callback check adapter. And I'm going to use this callback check adapter because we have to actually retrieve the password from the database and compare it with the clear text password because we're using the bcrypt encryption algorithm. And I'm using the specific type here even though there actually is an adapter interface. But in this case we need specific methods that are available on the database adapters. So that's why I'm using this specific implementation in this documentation. So let's just move on to implementing this method in our repository. The first thing I'll do here is that I'll create a callback, which will be a closure that compares the clear text password against the encrypted password by encrypting the clear text password and comparing the two. So what I'll do here, I can just copy our encryptor from down here and this will return true or false. True if the passwords match. So I'm going to return encryptor verify and the first parameter here is the clear text password and the second one is the encrypted password. So the authentication adapter is going to pass in these values to this callback and the first one is the encrypted password while the second one is the clear text password. So I'm just going to pass those in here and that's it for our callback. So next let's create our authentication adapter as you saw before is going to be of the type sense authentication adapter db table and callback check adapter and let's pass in some arguments here the first one being the database adapter the second one being the table that we want to check up against 
in our case the user table and then we'll have the the identity column so in our case it's email but this could also be username and next we'll have the credential column in our case the password column and last but not least will be the callback so I'm just going to return this authentication adapter so let's go ahead and make use of this adapter within our user service so I'll begin by modifying the interface and actually we'll have to make an authentication service which will need in other parts of our code so i will add a method called get authentication service in which we're going to create our authentication service so we will return an instance of send authentication authentication service and I'll also add a method for logging users in called login and we'll pass in an email and a password as arguments so these values will be validated against the database and here we're going to return a boolean value so true if the authentication succeeds and false otherwise so let's implement these methods so I'll begin by implementing the get authentication service because we're going to use this method within our login method as well so the first thing we'll do is we'll fetch the authentication adapter from our user repository so get authentication adapter and we're going to return a new authentication service and the first parameter is the storage where we can optionally store a user object or array I'm just going to pass in null because in fact the storage is going to default to the user session which is exactly what we want in this case and the second argument is the authentication adapter so I'll just write here storage defaults to session alright next let's implement the login method here so I'll begin by retrieving the authentication service from the method we just implemented and I'm going to retrieve the authentication adapter from this service get adapter and because we'll need to work with a database adapter specifically I'm just going to document this variable as a callback check adapter because I know that's the type of adapter that we're using in, using in this case like so and now I'm going to set the identity and credential values on this adapter and these are the values that the user has entered in our login form so set identity I'm going to pass in our email and set credential and I'll pass in the password now let's actually perform the validation and check if the if the credentials are correct so I'll use the authentication service and I'll call the authenticate method on it 
so I'll check here if the result is valid and the result is an object of the type result so I'll call the is valid method on it and actually I'll return true in here if everything is okay otherwise this method will return false down here so now I want so now in case that the authentication succeeded I want to store a user object within the session so I'll do that here on this authentication adapter we have a get results row object which basically just returns an instance of std object with the properties set matching the columns in our database so we can specify which columns we want to be returned here i'll just pass null because i want all of them and i'll pass in an array here which represent the columns that we want to omit in our case we just want to omit the password field because we don't want to store that in the session so on the authentication service we can call the get storage method which has a write method so we're just going to write our identity object on the storage which writes into the user session so next let's go into the index controller and we'll implement the login action so the first thing i'll do is i'll use a controller plugin named identity here if this returns something that's not null it means that the user has already been logged in so i'll just set a flash message here be an error message saying you are already logged in and i'll just redirect the user to the front page so the root home next i'll create an instance of our login form and if this is a post request then i'll set the post data on the form get post and i'll also set the input filter set input filter new login and if the form is valid then get the data from the form which has been normalized and let's call the user services login method here and we'll fetch the form data from our data variable and I'm just going to say here if login result is true then we'll add a flash message so add success message you have been logged in otherwise we'll add a warning saying invalid login credentials and now we just have to return a view model and pass in our form to the view script like so now in order to use the identity view helper we have to add a factory to our configuration file so i'll go within the global.php file and i'll add send backslash authentication backslash authentic service because this is actually the key that the view helper uses or looks for when it has to check whether a user is logged in or not so I'll just pass in the service locator here as we've seen many times before I'll fetch the user service from the service locator
and I'll just document this. And because we have this service, we can return the results of the get authentication service. So now our view helpers have this factory available. So let me just show you what I've done in our layout file. As you can see here, I've retrieved the user in our identity. And in two places, I'm just checking if the user is not null, because that means that we're logged in. And I'm just outputting the name of the currently logged in user here by accessing the user object that we've set to the session. So let's go into our browser and make sure that everything works. As you can see here, I'm currently not logged in. Let's go on the login page and I'll enter an email address of a user that I have previously created and the password. And as you can see here, now I'm logged in to my user. And this is going to show for all of the pages on the blog because I added that blog of code to the layout. So that's all for this lecture. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next lecture.